show already in progress. Folks, my first guest this evening is an Emmy and Golden Globe winning actor you know from Sideways, John Adams, Cinderella Man, and Billions. He now stars in the film The Holdovers. There was an incident when I was at Harvard with my roommate. And? He accused me of copying from his senior thesis, plagiarizing. Uh, well, did you? No, he stole from me. The blue-blooded pricks family had allies on the faculty. I mean, their last name is on a library, for God's sake. So he accused me in order to sanitize his treachery, and uh, they threw me out. Hey, so you got kicked out of Harvard for cheating? No, I got kicked out of Harvard for hitting him. <laughs> you hit him? What, like punched him out? No, I hit him with a car. Please welcome Paul Giamatti. That's a strong crowd. That's, thank back. you. Lovely to be back. Always nice to talk to you. Yes. I want to get. I want to get into the holdovers, which I think is a beautiful movie that thank everybody you. should see. Yes, indeed. Thank and, you. And but at first, <clears throat> I want to talk about the thing that people may not know about. I hope they all know about it, which is that you have a podcast. I with do. Professor Stephen Asma. Correct. Called Chinwag. That's right. Which I have done and enjoyed immensely. You were an incredible guest. You were thank maybe you. the best guest we had. I, it took so me a long far. time to say that. No, <laughs> no. Is no. there a, like a a guest, like a white whale for a you? Big game that I exactly. really want to so get. Like, what's like, besides you, besides you. some other folks. Yes, the Amy Sedaris, Besi Paul Rudd. Amy Sedaris, oh, Paul Rudd. Oh, the Roman uh, episode. Uh, Mary like, Beard, Mary who's Beard a great was Roman incredible. historian. Yeah. Yeah. I do have one in mind, in fact. And the one, the, the, the big game I want to bag is share. Wow. Come right? on. Can you feel that? Me and Cher in the same room talking about Sasquatch? Can you feel that? <laughs> Now, what's the problem here? You're Paul Giamatti. I you don't just know. Call it up and say, will... share, this is the time. Yes, I know. We're sending the team with the microphone. Apparently, to you. Two, two times in the past couple of years, I've gotten messages from my agent. They say to me, Cher wants to talk to you for some reason. And I just go, Just a message, Cher wants just to talk. Just Cher wants to talk to you. And it I almost go, sounds like you're in trouble with Cher. <laughs> totally. We should talk. Yes, Cher. totally. And I go, okay. And then I never hear anything. It goes away. And then it comes again. Cher really needs to talk to you. And I'm like, what the? is going on with Cher. She, and she so, needs to talk to you. Yes. Sounds like she needs a liver. <laughs> <laughs> or a kidney. Listen, I got, I got, I got him. Okay. If Cher needs a kidney, I well, have I one. Think, I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think Cher, when I interviewed her last, she said she watches the show. So Fantastic. do you want to just put the invitation right down the pipe right wow. there? Wow. Oh, so just, say? I can just look, right, where am I looking? Right down here? Yeah, right there with the light. Cher, it's Paul Giamatti. <laughs> if you're watching, baby, I'm here. Um, oh, okay. That's no, it. All right. No, hopefully, hopefully, no, no, no. no I don't no, want to go don't too put far. I don't, oh, yeah. I don't want to scare her off for the podcast. Oh, okay, yeah, great. What I love about Chinwag yes, is that your embracing of the mysterious. Yes. That it's all about answers and 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 being open to the inexplicable. That's in right. the world. The mysterious and things. Have like you that. had you have you had the the inexplicable, the numinous beyond your comprehension? <laughs> Yes, I have. I've had a lot of experiences like that. It was one of the reasons I do the show. You know, I, 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 one of the reasons I do it is I said I'm tired of not talking about Sasquatch. I'm tired of not talking about ghosts. You know what? It's that... about damn time. <laughs> I know. So I've been Where do you find the courage, Paul <laughs> That's Giamatti? exactly it. It's time for me to speak out about ghosts. So I've had a lot of ghostly things happen to me. Yes. And, like apparitions? Or? Uh, yeah, or, or strange things. Yes, I've never had an apparition, but I've had weird, I've heard weird things. I've I heard... have a photo. Is this related to that? Because I was given this and yes. said at some point it might come in handy. Oh, yes. Okay, I, sure. What is, yeah. Explain what I'm yeah. holding Oh, well, this is a whole, this is oh, wow. either a okay. play or something very yeah. upsetting. Uh, yeah, that's right. I told your producer the story. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm talking to a skull. I was in the play Hamlet. This is, yeah, That's I was right. in the Hamlet. And, you know, Shakespeare, there's, Macbeth is a famously kind of haunted play. Yeah. Hamlet is too, because there's a ghost in it. So I'll, tell, I'll make this quick, but Hamlet's, the father of Hamlet's ghost appears to him, right? And so in our production, I'm playing Hamlet, the ghost appears. At some point, he hands me a dagger. And I'm going to use this dagger in the rest of the play to threaten people and then kill Polonius, the old man, and stuff. So I have it. In our production, it's a modern-day production, so it's a big-ass knife. 
It's like a Bowie knife. It's like a bayonet. So I got it in a scabbard on my side. So I'm walking through the play, the rest of the play. I come out and I do To Be or Not To Be, famous speech. I've got the knife on me. I would do a little kind of stuff with the knife. Bear bodkin. Yes, bear bodkin, all that stuff. And so the scene goes right on, and I, and I keep talking uh, to Ophelia, who comes out. So the scene continues. I'm doing the scene. I'm sort of berating her. And all of a sudden, I notice my knife is gone. It's disappeared. And I'm looking around the stage. I'm doing the lines, and I'm looking around the stage. You know, where the f did my knife go? Like this. And I can tell she's going, where did his knife go? Like this. And you would have heard this thing fall out or seen it. I'm looking around. I go off stage. Stage manager says, where the hell did your knife go? I go, I have no idea. I had it when I went out. They send stagehands out. They search the stage during the intermission. They look in the audience. They can't find the knife. So they give me a bad rubber knife to use for the rest of the thing. I'm like, this is going to look stupid, but I got to. So it comes up to another intermission. We come, go off, never found the knife. Come back in, there's a piece of scenery flies in from way up in the top of the theater, lands down. I'm supposed to come walking in to threaten Claudius, who murdered my father, to threaten him with a knife while he's praying. So I'm about to walk out behind this piece of scenery where there's all these archways and these steps. And the stage manager says, look out there in the middle archway. And I look out and my knife is lying in the middle archway on a piece of scenery that was 100 feet up in the air. Was Claudius played by David Blaine? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. It was crazy. I swear to God this happened. Wow. I swear to God this happened. And the other th weird thing is a guy, a buddy of mine who was there, came backstage and said, oh, this was great. You were terrific. Thank you, I said to him. And he said, what happened to your knife in that one scene? You, were, you had it in the beginning of the scene, then it disappeared. And so to this day, I have no idea what the hell happened. It makes no sense. Wow. Ghostly, <laughs> tune in to Chinwag. Share, you can, you can do more of this. This is this where is it where happens, you can enjoy, baby. share. <laughs> we have to take a quick break, but don't go nowhere, because that's Paul Giamatti, and he'll be here when we get back.